when we do a segment at the end, it's called Balls and Strikes. And okay. we're each going to – Alex will start. If you like the question, call the strike, answer said question. If you don't like the question, call the ball. You can either answer it or move on if you want. Make okay. us feel bad about asking a bad question. And whoever pitches a strikeout wins the game. So, Alex, okay. go ahead. All right. Now, I apologize to Vinny well in advance. I, uh, I guess I use, I, I use a phone a friend for uh, some of these. Um, so He's putting his glasses on. He's putting his glasses uh, on to make yeah. sure he reads these right. So when John Boog Shambi got the job with the Marlins, you messaged him via AOL. By the way, Boog still uses an AOL email. Yep. Yep. What was your AIM handle? Oh, wow. Uh, I'm going to say strike, and I'm going to say Len J. Casper. Is that right? I don't know. Oh, you didn't tell okay. me that. Yeah, I think that's right. Me. Oh, I thought you were asking that question because it was a funny username or something. No, no that's no. it. Well, no, he, calls mean, me, he calls me Len J. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no. He okay, just asked what his AML uh, handle is. Oh, that's and, funny. Yeah. yeah. Len J. And, Casper was my AOL handle. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and and I said to Boo, I go, but the real question was, did he message you on AIM after you got the Cubs job? Because that would have been, you know, full circle. Yeah, I don't think I was on AOL at that point. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so who, is Vinny next or what? No, no I, Alex is up now. I, 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 oh, it's, oh, you keep going. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's like one-on-one uh, -on -one basketball, make it, take it. Okay, gotcha. What is... One piece of sports memorabilia you don't own that you've always wanted to own? I have to say it's a strike again. That's a great question. I am not a memorabilia person, but I would love to have uh, an authentic wool jersey of one of the all-time greats. And it doesn't matter who, you know, maybe Al Kaline, who I was a Tiger fan growing up. Um Hank Aaron, something like that. Uh, just the concept of wearing wool in the middle of the summer is just makes my head want to explode. But that's what the game knew for about the first, what, 90 years? And then uh, only in the 70s did polyester take over. But, uh, yeah, I would like to have kind of a, an old-school Major League wool uniform. So, All right, so 0-2, uh, you got the strikeout pitch two, ready? Oh, I, I, this is going to be it right here. Um, but I can't take credit for this question. I can't take credit for this question, too. But I have to ask it. Why don't you have a signature home run call? Oh, uh, I'm going to go ball. I'm going ball. I'm going, do I still have to answer it? You don't have – if you don't want to, you well, don't have to. No, I will. I'll, I'm going to I'm gonna say ball just because I want Vinny to ask me a question. But um, every home run is different. And I didn't want home runs to feel normal. I want them all to have their own little place in the world. And so I, you know, if something natural hit me, uh, great. But I, I never wanted to create something that I would say every time. A follow-up to that. Now, I'm a John Sterling guy, you know, like I, because he's, yeah. you know, he's why I'm doing this. Um, what's your take? Now, obviously, whether I mean I don't know your opinion of John Sterling, but what's your take on the nicknames? Do you like them? Do you not? I all I care about, and John is a friend of mine. I love him. All I care about, guys, is that announcers are who they are, mm -hmm. and if you are yourself, uh, go for it. Matt Vasgersian is a friend of mine. He used to do movie references with his home run calls. That's who Matt is. Uh, mm -hmm. John uh, has a theater background. He has a flair for the dramatic. His home run calls are very much a part of his personality. So I love that about him. And it makes sense with Susan and her background too, you know, and yeah. I know Susan and them talk a lot about, you know, how they come up with the names and stuff. And a lot of times, sometimes they're over my head, but then I do my research on why he's saying, you know, like for Solar Day, you know, he had, you know, Solar, you know, he went into this whole thing and it's like, that's right. pretty cool. Can I, can I, we're going to do something different here. I'm going to, I'm going to put Vinny on the spot. Well, and you can say strike or ball if you want. Um, I know you're a uh, you're put together. You're a a slugging on base first baseman, 
But looking here, and I could be wrong, but I see under the SB category, <laughs> including your college and your minor league days, you are a career O for one in the stolen base department. Are you ever going to steal a base? Well, Lynn, at <laughs> Instructs this year, I would just like to announce to the world, I did steal a base. All oh, right. Stolen base. I have a video of it. I, I think I put it. Yeah, I did put it on my Twitter. Okay. And I think that's it for me, though. I think I got the one, one for one in professional baseball, even though Instructs don't count for statistics. So I guess I'll say... I need to get one in a real game at some point, just just so that on the back of the baseball card, they don't eliminate the SB category on there. Yeah, uh, on your baseball reference page, you got to have a one. So did you steal the base because you hadn't done it before? Did you have a big lead? What were the circumstances? Uh, essentially, because, you, you know, the Royals are known for their speed, and I have none. So uh, that's kind of something we're working on is just developing a little, not to be a stolen base threat, but just – yeah, a Rod in his later years, you know, he he take one every once in a while. That's um, right. So that's kind of the goal. And I had I had a good read on the pitcher. I actually knew the guy. He's from where I'm from, which makes it a little bit better, I think. And I just looked at my first base coach. I said, "Hey, I'm doing it. I'm going for it." And I just took off. And man, that was a I should have just taken the base from second base. That was originally going to be the plan is just take it, walk off the field and go home. Cause that's about as good as I'm going to get on a night. Yeah. So just, you know, this is how I, okay. And this, I think this is instructive because you were talking about, you know, preparation. So if, if we had a Cubs or now a White Sox Royal spring training game and you came to the plate uh, and I pull up your, your, your baseball reference page and I look at, you know, from the time you were 19, I guess, in college to, to, to 2019, um, you know, a little more home run power. So one question that may come up on a broadcast. Now, I can ask you this now, but I, if I couldn't ask you then, I would say, well, uh, two things are possible and both may be true. Uh, maybe you added some, some muscle uh, as you got uh, to be 20 and 21. And I would also wonder about launch angle and whether you maybe possibly changed your approach a little bit. Uh, am, am I correct in either case? Uh, the, the first case, yes. Okay. Um, I got hurt my sophomore year. The coach told me, you have eight months of rest, pretty much. I want you to gain 30 pounds. <laughs> okay. Check. I, yep. I, I left at 205. <laughs> I came back at 240. Uh, and that helped, that, that took away some of the agility there and some of the speed. Sure. And then in terms of launch angle, I really didn't change much. I just think my approach got better and I got stronger and my goal, my entire life was hit. I want to hit line drives and I want to spin them. And I'm not necessarily like, I do worry about it now a little bit. You know, I know where my angles, I want to have them, but I, as you see in the, in there, I didn't get real power until 2019. And I right. think it's just more of instead of hitting them this way, I was hitting them this way. <laughs> yep. Yep. Well, I mean, I, you know, it's funny. I look at your profile, 6'4", 245, you're listed on this page. You don't want to be hitting ground balls. Your right. job's, your job's to find gaps and hit the ball right. over the fence. Yeah. And when I do hit a ground ball, I don't beat it out. So <laughs> Exactly. Right. You're probably hitting it uh, to the second baseman in shallow right. Yep. Or the yep. shortstop right up the middle. That's the <laughs> one that burns me the most. It's not the ground ball to the to right yeah. field. It's the one up the middle that is a hit a hundred percent of the yeah. time. And you just, you can't even see him. That's the worst part is you hit it up the middle. The pitcher moves. Oh, the shortstop standing right there. Yeah. Oh. That's great. So you guys have, I, I've been able to do some homework here. So I, I, I've got the, I've got the Vinny profile when, when <laughs> we see him. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Killing two birds with one stone. Yeah. <laughs> I know. So I had a question. And yeah, go ahead. It just, I forgot the question. Um, oh. I can't remember if it was any good or not. So I'll ask the question for the show. It'll be yes. a ball, but that's fine. This is for the show <laughs> and strictly for the show. Do you prefer drinking out of plastic or glass cups? Oh, uh, that's a strike glass. Yeah, not a plastic. Yeah, yeah. Not even plastic. Just, it just tastes, things just taste better out of glass, I think. I'm with you. So I'm with you on that. When you were younger and you decided you wanted to get into the broadcasting business, what would you have defined as success then? And Oof. clearly you're successful, but would you have defined what you're doing now as a, as a success? Yes. When I was, when I was younger, it was just do a big league game. 
And I think the same will be for you. Uh, once you get there and play your first big league game, you will get very greedy and you will say, I never want to leave. Mm -hmm. That there's no question. I remember doing my first major league game, Brewers Pirates, uh, April of 1999. And I left the ballpark saying, I found my love and I want to do it more. And uh, thank goodness I've been able to do it, you know, 3,000 times or whatever in the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. That was a strike, by the way. So it's 0-2. Um, so you've called World Series. I'm have you called an All-Star game? I, I have not. You've not called them, so maybe that could answer this question. But so you've called the World Series. You've done pretty much everything one could do in the broadcasting business. What, what do you look forward to potentially being able to do one day? Well, a lot of it was answered, I think, in, in taking this job, and that is – you know, the radio calls are big moments. Uh, I haven't had any of those. I've had a lot of TV calls. Uh, so, you know, it, my goal here, and that's another strike. So this is, you, you struck me out, but um, it's more granular than it yeah. is grand. Than grand. Uh -huh. um, I, I, I want to, I want to be the person who can describe very specifically and eloquently uh, what is happening and have people understand it who are listening. And that's something I've never uh, really been able to do. And I want to see if I'm good at it. What, what, Alex, what did I do? Was that too easy? I had a really good one that I thought well, I was going to win. It, Alex. <laughs> so it, it's actually, I'll call it. Um, yeah. It's extra innings. I guess we're tied, but free baseball, uh, yeah. free baseball. That's right. Um, runner on second base here. Uh <laughs> It kind of it's more of a follow up to that, right? And you, broadcasters, right? There's a difference between an announcer and a broadcaster. Broadcasters, right? Like John Sterling's John Sterling. You said it. The best at broadcasters are the people that are them. Which it, I meant no disrespect by saying broadcaster. If you prefer announcer, I don't know enough about the the biz. No, you're right. You're right. You nailed it. So when did you realize that you are Len Casper? Hmm. Uh, the, I'm going to fudge it and say probably 2007, maybe, maybe my third year with the Cubs. You know, I was 31 when I got the Marlins job. I was 34 when I got the Cubs job. And in both cases, it was a bit of a whirlwind and I didn't have a ton of experience but I think after five or six years of doing this, I felt like I was basically the same broadcaster that you hear today. Uh, I don't like to go back and listen to myself from 20, 25 years ago, because all I hear are the mistakes. But I think you are as good as uh, your experience says you are. And that's the one bit of advice I have for every broadcaster out there. It's like every other occupation, practice makes perfect experience makes you better. Uh, when you first start doing it, it's a lot like playing the game. It's really fast. And the more experience you garner, uh, the more you can slow down your heartbeat a little bit and understand that you have more time to say what you need to say.